Okay, let's say you're an indie comic creator, but you don't think of yourself that way. You're just a comic creator. You're telling a story. You don't work for you know the big publishers, and you're putting something out of your own momentum. So how can you compete with those big players, and how can you go from being seen as kind of an underground indie comic creator to just a comic creator, somebody putting out content, finding an audience? How do you do it? Well, there are some easy ways, and it kind of starts with a few fundamentals, but here's the good news you are probably more nimble, more agile, and more able to make these changes than the big publishers. So you have a going in advantage. So let's talk about that. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, they, uh, th this is one of those topics where I don't know how many people it appeals to, but I do have a lot of people in the channel who are making their own comics, who have taken that plunge. And I'm just, first off, just right off the bat, I am incredibly proud of you. I'm glad you're doing it. You are you're doing the right thing. You're making your own comic. You have an idea. You're putting it out. Good for you. That is what you should do. And and thank you. Most importantly, thank you. Even if I never see your comic, um, I'm glad you're doing it for yourself, for the business. I think the thing that makes comics continue to tick is not the kind of the mechanical you know machinations of of marvel and dc but the fact that so many people are out there trying to get their ideas out into the world trying to share them and in many cases fearless in doing so i think that that's uh, it's really noble and, and nobody thanks you guys enough not anywhere close to enough for the fact that you're out there putting stuff out and and getting your ideas out and just just hammering through it in fact if anything i think you deserve extra praise because a lot of times People will tell you to stop or they'll give you subtle, subtle kind of indications that you're not doing good enough. Or And, and what's interesting is uh, social media, if you're a creator and you're an indie creator, um, I, I think I, I've talked to a decent amount of people um, on either of my accounts. There's a lot of people, first off, a lot of the indie comic creators run block bots because they feel like to, to uh, kind of get in to the people uh, higher up. They have to secure their, their accounts, and they have to make sure they're not talking to anyone problematic. So a lot of block bots get run, and unfortunately, they're often blocking the kind of people that are going to help them be successful. Uh, they, they, they don't realize they're actually you know, taking food out of their mouth or they're locking themselves into a bad position. Because uh, what's interesting is that if you watch the dynamic between a lot of more senior comic creators, people who have, who have quote-unquote made it or are higher up, there's a lot of shade that gets thrown downward. Some of it's very, very subtle, like, oh, they're doing a little book. I, I was fascinated to see uh, some big name Marvel writers who are, you know, kind of they're doing the visible women uh, bit and they're they're complimenting these these, you know, indie comic creators that are that are underground. But they're doing so in a really subtle, demeaning way by like, oh, they have a little book out there that you should really check it out. Or, hey, this is a really creative thing. Um, that you may have never heard of, or this story was uh, was really incredible. Given that it, you know, it's it's just being done by a single person. There's just a lot of little, tiny, very subtle things injected in there that feel like, you know, just kind of screw you. It's 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 they can't just say, hey, um, you know, here's a cool person with a cool idea making a cool comic book. And um, they're, they're, you know, you should check it out. No, they have to remind everybody that the person is, you know, doesn't have a job at the big two and it's not a big official. Anyway, I'm, I'm going, I'm going too far. But enough about all that. I think if you are an indie comic creator, you're somebody doing it for yourself. Then one of the things that you really need to do, if you haven't done it yet, is, is take a pause and look at uh, all the different sides, things that are not comic books that fit your space, fit your genre. And this is one of the biggest mistakes that people make time and time again, is they're, they're making a comic, and let's say it's a sci-fi with a slice of life dynamic. And it's a comic book, it's kind of got, it's like Scott Pilgrim meets uh, Aliens, all right? So uh, whatever the case is, that's your genre, that's what you're doing. And you've got a comic book on your hands, you're proud of it, you've done some good work. Um, and they immediately go into the comic book channel to promote it, they go and they they try and attach themselves to other comic books, or they try and uh, they kind of enter the market with a bunch of other indie books, or they even self-classify themselves as smaller. 
they they come in and they're like, uh, here's um, here is uh, my book, and it's um, you know, it, it, it let's put it right up next to a bunch of stuff from Image or Boom or other stuff, and immediately kind of they're lost in the shuffle because the big publishers have that kind of you know they've been around for a while, consistency going for them, so a lot of people just gravitate toward those books and ignore your concept. But the interesting part is that there are markets. You know, if you go look at the science fiction um, for, you know, independent filmmakers or art, not comic book, just art or games. And that's a huge one Board games, tabletop games, etc. And you promote your comic there. It make friends in those channels. Go there and say, hey, you enjoy, you know, sci fi games. You want something kind of light and humorous, but still fits the genre. Hey, I made this comic. Check it out. Here's immediately what you will discover. Uh, Number one, most of those other things do not have art that you're going to get compared to. So if you're still refining your skills, you're going to come off looking better because your competition is nobody. Two, you are directly talking at that point to people you know are likely to be interested in your pitch or your genre. You're going to go talk to somebody who's doing a game um, or, you know, who's uh, I've seen some of the most successful people. Get a comic that's vaguely similar to a card game or some kind of tabletop game, and they go and they find those message boards and they're like, "Hey, I like this game too. It fits with what I did. I made a comic book, kind of in the same uh, general feel. You might want to check it out." And you get a lot of support from that direction. You're also getting people whose dollars are not already being divided up amongst other comics. So you're getting, in theory, new money. You're getting somebody that that might be interested in support you because they really like what you do. This has another big benefit in that you're getting somebody who you know is is likely to stay with you longer, because you're you're not just producing a comic for them to collect. You're producing something that fits their interests. These people also tend to be really good advertisers for you. They will go to other people in the kind of their community or this this environment, and really start promoting you. If you do something with horror or romance or uh, sci-fi, those three genres in particular, or kids, but we'll get to that in a minute, but those three, um, there, there's a case where there's tons of message boards and fan groups and other things for movies and games and models and all kinds of stuff with very, very rabid, very passionate people who like to consume things that fit that market. And there's very little. If you go in there, you will quickly discover there's almost no attention to comics there. The big companies, none of the publishers are doing it. You, you know, maybe some of the the people who are in this community will be bringing those those titles in, but you going directly saying, "Hey, I've got a core book. Here it is. It's graphic novel, whatever. It's a comic. Uh, check it out. I think you'll like it." it. You will get immediate positive reaction. A couple of people I mentioned this to have done that, and immediately they get pickup. They sell through with their books. They tap into a whole other market. And the greatest part about it is it's a market they're happier with. It tends to be a market that's a little bit more sane, a lot more loyal, and really helps build up their business without all the drama that goes on in kind of the main comic sphere. I mentioned kids. Kids is another one that's a little bit tougher. But if you are, if you have a book that you think is is coming in at kids or teens or or tweens, whatever it happens to be, um, you are barking up the wrong tree if you are spending a lot of time on comic message boards and, and within the comic community. That audience isn't there. Where you want to go is you want to go to places that you know schools, libraries, after school programs. There's right now a ton of uh, bloggers and YouTubers that do kind of the the things for mom. And this may sound absolutely absurd, but there is there is massive business there, particularly around um, entertainment properties. And even more so now with the pandemic, moms and parent support groups are trying to find new ways to entertain the kids and and get content and everything for them. So going in and tapping into that, if you have a comic that truly does fit that market, you know, you're not you're not going in and selling. Uh, what was that? There was like a crowdfunded comic that was like. When a guy had sex with women, it would give them powers, like something harem, super harem. Maybe that was it. Anyway, don't don't go pitch that. Don't pitch that concept into a mom's group. That that will not go well for you. But if you if you have a comic that is um, that is really kind of you know all ages friendly or has something fun, particularly it, it gives some good reading, whatever it happens to be, go to some mom group. Say, hey, are you trying to get your kids to read? Are you trying to get them excited by something? I'm a independent you know creator. 
I'm, I'm not attached to a publisher. I'm just trying to make some stuff that people can read and enjoy and, you know, kids and parents can get to, you know, here you go. Again, not only will you find a receptive audience, you'll find a very direct audience to what you're trying to do. And on top of that, you will get people who will then, free of charge, promote the hell out of you. They will, they will happily share it. They will put it out because a lot of these groups are built on people bringing value into the group. That's how they maintain their own position there. So if you're able to feed it with some things that make you know them look better, make it look like they're reaching out and getting you know content, um, they will cheerfully get on board and do more than you can ever imagine. Again, this is is largely greenfield. Very few independent comic creators do this. Everybody falls into the trap of going right back to the web comic or comic community and trying to sell and market and and be there. And I'm not saying you you avoid it. I'm not saying that, uh, you know, get away and, and you should never be there, but I am saying that it, it, it's a bit of a trap because you are definitely elbow to elbow competing with a lot of other people doing the same thing. And the audience you're trying to sell to, to market, to get that, that fan base and get that money flowing into you, uh, that's not where they are. They are stuck in their own communities somewhere else. You know, you're definitely going to sell to people who collect comics and like comics, but you, you don't. You, you rarely are making a comic for comics. Do you, do you know what I mean? You're, you're not making a comic designed to appeal to comic collectors. You're, des- you're making a comic designed to appeal to a horror audience or a kid's audience or a romance audience. You're, you're making something that is a good story in that genre. You're not making something designed to appeal only to collectors. That would be absurd. Um, I, I think now really big name people can do that. If you are you know, Sean Gordon Murphy, and you're doing a crowdfunded book, then definitely you're appealing to comic collectors and you're appealing to people who are already in on comics. And that makes sense. He has a name. He's already built up his reputation. He's, he's good. Now, does that mean he still wouldn't benefit from going to some of these other places? Yeah, absolutely. He should, you know, somebody on his team should absolutely be poking at some of these other groups and saying, Hey, do you like a, uh, you know, fantasy high concept adventure? Do you like a, uh, you know, you like video games and all the rest. Here's a here's a book that would fit your interest. That would be smart. But Sean Gordon Murphy or any big name uh, does not need to do this kind of work. But if you're new, you're coming up, you're an indie comic creator, you're just trying to build a name for yourself. Take half of the time you're spending in the comics community and go put it directly within some of these pockets. This is my advice to you. I promise it's it, it will work out for you. Anyway, hey, uh, what do you think? Good advice, bad advice. You've done it before. You're interested to learn more. You're an indie comic creator and you really want to figure out how you do this for yourself. Drop me a note. Let me know. Um, ask me any questions and I'm happy to help you. Always happy to help you. If you don't feel comfortable doing it on YouTube, you know, uh, drop me an email at comicsperch at gmail.com. Happy to help you there as well. Assuming I read my email, which is always dodgy. Uh, otherwise, like, subscribe, follow me on social media. Most importantly, thanks for listening. and. If you're one of these people who are creating content, thank you for creating, really.